Hello guys, welcome to my new video. Today we'll be looking at Holy Paladins and we'll be looking at how do I heal as a Holy Paladin. This is going to be this is going to be very well suited to new players. This is going to be very well suited to players who are looking to re-roll to Holy Paladin and they're wondering what kind of healing do I do? Am I only a tank healer? Do I only heal the tanks all the time? And am I the only, am I the only person who's going to get blamed if a tank dies? It's just kind of true. Because Holy Balance are the only healers in Legion right now that fit the role of tank healing. They perform tank healing really, really well. And that's purely because of beacons. That is purely because of beacons. But because you do such good healing through beacons, it actually does not mean you'll be healing tanks at all. And it's actually funny because when I'll be talking about the gameplay, you'll notice that things like if you use WoW Analyzer, if you use Warcraft Logs and you analyze your logs, you'll notice that one of the suggestions is going to be you should not be healing the tanks, the beacons should do most of the work, you should let other healers know that they should place hots on them and things like that. Of course, if a tank is about to die, you will have to heal the beacon target and you kind of get an incentive to do it through the beacon mechanics as well. So first of all, Holy Paladin gameplay is actually quite simple. Like you have only a couple of things to look after and that is basically Holy Shock on cooldown. Holy Shock is your bread and butter spell. It's going to give you infusion of light procs. Infusion of light procs will reduce the cast time of your next Holy Light or increase the healing of your next Flash of Light. So it's very similar to what Restoration Shamans will be going through with Tidal Waves. It's basically a copy of that. So in order to get... In order for your Holy Shock to crit all the time, you'll want to reach a 50% crit with your gear. 50% crit because of the way Holy Shock works will give you 100% crit. So Holy Shock will have a chance to crit every time. Which makes your Infusion of Light procs always happen. I don't have 50% crit at this time, I have 47, uh, but if I had 50% crit, it would crit every single time. And then you'll be able to do, do I need some really juicy flash lights or do I just need a fast holy light? Holy light is extremely, extremely efficient because you will be placing beacons on the tanks. And because this is mainly a raiding guide, you'll be running with talents similar to this. You'll be running talents similar to this. You'll always have Beacon of Faith in raid scenarios. It's so, so good. Beacon of Lightbringer is... The other beacons are somewhat situational. Beacon of Faith is amazing. You'll have Judgment of Light. What Judgment of Light means, basically. You don't have to worry about anything. Just make sure you use your Judgment as much as possible. If you have a way to track... Because you'll get, for the next 40 successful attacks against that target, the people will get healed. So basically, you place it on a boss, and if the people are attacking the boss, you it's good to have a tracker to tell you like, okay, you had 40 stacks, now it's 20, now it's 10, now it's 0, you should judge the target again. A good case scenario is you can judge it on cooldown. It's not bad to do that. It's not bad to do that. It's basically free healing that you don't have to worry at all. It's the most passive mechanic. Just use judgment as much as you can. It'll give you free healing. After that, you'll most likely have Holy Avenger or Divine Purpose based on the tier sets you used. Tier 21, 4 set and 2 set. The 4 set is very, very RNG. It's basically reliant on your Holy Shock. You won't change your game style. You'll still Holy Shock on cooldown. It doesn't matter. The fact is that maybe sometimes when you Holy Shock, you'll get this buff that's going to increase your critical heals of your Holy Light and Flash of Light and, and Light of Dawn. Holy Shock has 30% chance to increase your critical healing of your Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Light of Dawn by 100. Critical healing means that those spells still have to crit, and if they're going to crit, it's going to be really, really powerful. But the whole point is, the RNG factor, Holy Shock has to proc it, 30% chance, it's not using a deck system. Once Holy Shock procs this buff, your Holy Light, your Flash of Light, your Light, uh, light Dawn, Light of Dawn, they also have to crit. So it's like a crit, it's like RNG on top of RNG. And the fact is that tier 21 4 set will not change the way you play. So it's really passive, unlike tier 20 where there was a bit more like a kind of a like chain rotation of spells that it should do a lot of beacon healing and things like that. Bring back tier 20. 
808, T21 is very orangey, and I don't really want to even talk about it. It's not really going to change your uh, game style. If you don't have any tier sets, your game style is not going to be changed. Um, after that, you most likely will have Devotion or Aura of Sacrifice or Mercy. All of these are actually quite viable. Aura of Sacrifice is amazing. When you actually read about it, like, you know, while you're above 75% H uh, health, 10% of all the damage taken by allies within 10 years is redirected to you. So you're kind of constantly losing HP, which is not that much. Pridus is actually a very, very popular choice for Holy Paladins in Antorus. Pridus, along with the Judgment Ring. Uh, Pridus is very strong because... First of all, Holy Paladins have more HP. I actually have 7.2 million HP on a Holy Paladin that's only 964 item level. Holy Paladins will have more stamina. Due to more stamina, you'll get bigger Pride Shields because you most likely will be using Aura Sacrifice. Aura Sacrifice will be taking a bit HP from you. So it'll be taking HP from the shield. Also, Light of the Martyr, which is your healing ability on the move, damages you. So Pridus is an overall a very, very strong legendary for Holy Paladins throughout on Taurus. Throughout on Taurus. After that, Repentance, it doesn't really matter. Rule of Law is actually one of the best spells in here for raiding. Rule of Law is amazing because it like, uh, increases the range of your heals and the reach of your mastery. Your mastery, we'll talk about that a bit later on. But the thing is, it's going to... It's going to allow you to heal the people who are way out in the back or way out in the front and you're like, what are you doing there? You'll just pop your rule of law and you'll be able to heal them, which can be extremely, extremely strong in things like Agrimar, where you, Holy Paladin, will be counted as a melee and you'll be standing in the melee camp. The range will be running around, the range will be getting Ravenous Blaze, they'll be going to the very corners of the end and you'll be like, I can't reach them. Let's pop rule of law and now we can really really strong for those kind of situations in tier 15 honestly every single of these talents is completely viable i've seen every single talent being used i've seen bestowed fate lights uh, lights hammer uh, bestowed fate can be just your default heal like i mean you place it on a target after a couple of seconds there's going to be healing so i'm going to be healed in one second right now i got healed like i mean that can be combined with your aura of sacrifice which we'll talk about uh, i'll talk about it uh, later on Light's Hammer is like an AoE heal. You kind of have to make sure that the fight, you know, everyone's grouped up and things like that, so it's situational. Crusader's Might might seem like a DPS talent to you. Crusader's Strike reduces the cooldown of your Holy Shock. The fact is, Holy Paladins will spend majority of the time in the melee camp, like I said. Holy Paladins and Mist Weavers are the only two healers in World of Warcraft Legion that are considered to be as a melee class and therefore ranged abilities are not going to target you you can safely stay in the melee camp because you're a holy paladin and your master is going to increase your healing is going to be increased by the proximity to, to the targets it's not a bad idea to stay in the melee camp and just heal the melee people it's not a bad idea you can also do the whole fact of go to the ranged and stay in the range camp as long as you're not staying by yourself somewhere in the corner your mastery is going to do nothing. You need to make sure you're grouped up by, like, you know, ranged or melee camps. So that's a huge fact in terms of uh, Holy Paladin healing. But you're a melee class anyway, so you'll probably be staying at the tanks and the melee as well. And like I said, Crusader might, uh, Crusader might, Crusader Strike. When you're staying at the melee, you'll be hitting the tank, you'll be hitting the boss with Crusader Strike. Your Crusader Strike is going to reset the cooldown uh, of Holy Shock and Light of Dawn. Holy Shock, Light of Dawn are extremely, extremely powerful spells that you use on cooldown. It can be actually a good DPS slash HP talent. So it's really, really good. So how do we play? First of all, you place your beacons on the target. You place your beacons on the targets. After that, you have Holy Shock. You most likely will be using that on cooldown, like I mentioned, Infusion of Light procs. And then you kind of have, you know, Flash of Light if you want a quick, inefficient heal. Or Holy Light, if you want a quick heal with Infusion of Light procs. Or if you don't have Infusion of Light procs, it'll be quite slow. But it'll be efficient heal. And not an expensive heal. But it'll be kind of slow. And then after that, you have your Light of Dawn. And then you, after that, you have Light of Dawn, which is basically your only AoE ability. And you can use that almost on cooldown, just making sure that people you get, you get to heal some people. It gives you a certain buffs on you. It gives you the... Sacred Dawn, so the people affected by your Light of Dawn receives 10% increased healing from the Paladin. So it's a small thing, like on logs, that'll account for like 1 or 2% in terms of HPS. 
So it's it's not major, but it's not something that you like, you know, completely don't think about it. Make sure you have it shown up on your grid or your voodoo or whatever. I have it shown up on the bottom right hand corner so I know which targets are going to have an increased healing from my spells. So that's basically it. Holy Shock, Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Light of Dawn. That's your bread and butter spells as a Holy Paladin. And after that, and after that, it's basically all cooldowns. And you're wondering like, how the hell do Holy Paladins get 2 million HPS? It's all true cooldowns and you have a lot of cooldowns. You have Holy Avenger. You have Wings, Avenging Wrath, which is really, really strong. You have Tears Deliverance, which is arguably your only hot ability. It's your only hot ability that you can use. It has a cast time, so you need to keep that in mind. It has quite a long cast time. It's the only cooldown that you have that has a cast time. And that's really important to know. Then you have uh, Aura Mastery, like I mentioned. Aura Mastery, you always will have Aura Mastery, but it's going to empower different auras. Your, either your Devotion Aura, which is just the damage you take, uh, that the party takes, Aura of Sacrifice, while Aura of Sacri Aura Mastery is active, 50% of it effective healing you deal is replicated to all allies or aura of mercy while aura aura mastery is active heals all allies in the aura heals all allies. so this is passive healing this is effective healing this is damage reduction and these are all viable aura sacrifice is probably my one of my favorite ones though and i'll talk about why so you place beacons on the targets you most likely will not want to heal the beacon targets because you if you want to be mana efficient and paladins can be very very mana efficient you'll just target the people who do not have the beacon and you just use like holy shock flash of light and light of dawn and those things are going to transfer to the beacon targets they don't cost a lot of mana they proc they give you procs they give you like infusion of light Holy Light is very efficient and you'll be healing, like, you know, if you're healing someone outside the raid with Holy Light, you'll be healing three targets at the same time with one Holy Light, beacon healing, two beacon targets and the person that you're healing right now. So it's extremely, extremely mana efficient and good in terms of HPS. So if you're running low, if you're running low mana as a Holy Paladin, just start using Holy Shock, start using Holy Lights and Light of Dawns and you can sustain yourself for a very very long time like that now if you need additional healing flashlight comes into play and now you have cooldowns so you probably will have holy avengers maybe you don't maybe you won't have holy avenger maybe you'll opt in to uh, use divine purpose light of dawn and holy shock have 15 percent chance to not start the cooldowns and make the next cast free which is extremely extremely potent because holy shock with tier 21 4 set you know more holy shocks more chances to proc the tier 21 force set if you don't have a tier 21 force set you most likely will be running holy avenger if you do have tier 21 force set you will start considering to use divine purpose as a talent and depending on the legendaries whether you have the class ring or not and class ring is actually a very decent legendary so now holy avenger wings tier deliverance or of sacrifice and on top of that I have balance some people will tell you to macro all these abilities to one which you can't do it's all going to depend on the damage patterns it's all going to depend on the damage patterns. If you know there's going to be an insane amount of healing required, you can actually precast your Tears Deliverance because you should use your Tears Deliverance as the first cooldown no matter what because it has a cast time. You don't want to cast your Holy Avenger and then you have your increased haste or like use your wings and then cast your Tears Deliverance because you're wasting one second to apply your, tear your Tears Deliverance. You want to cast Tear Deliverance as your first cooldown and then combine it with something else if you want to do that. Now, if you know the damage parts, I actually don't recommend you to macro everything to one. Un unless you know there's going to be an insane amount of damage, like say Agrimar, you're doing Mythic Agrimar, and there's like, you need to use all your cooldowns for the two adds, and things like that. Then yeah, you can start off with Tears Deliverance, you can combine it with the Holy Avenger, you can combine it with Wings, and then if you pop Aura of Sacrifice, if you pop Aura Master with Aura of Sacrifice, and this is when, why, why I say that Aura of Sacrifice can be one of the best cooldowns in the game because first of all it requires effective healing so what that means is that once you pop your aura of mastery which is going to buff your aura of sacrifice you need to make sure that you're going to heal targets that are low hp but if you have like wings if you have holy avenger if you have tears deliverance rolling and the fact you can also use bestowed fate 
right before you're going to proc your Aura Master with Aura of Sacrifice, because Bestowed Fate is going to detonate after a couple of seconds, and that detonation could happen during your Aura of Mastery. So these are, there are little tips and tricks on how to actually optimize the healing. Um, once you pop your Aura Master, you need to make sure you heal the targets that are low. With wings, honestly, if you pop your Aura Master with wings, you see my, my mouse cursor tells me how long I've left. One Holy Shock on a target that's low can actually bring up the whole raid. If you get a good crit of Holy Shock, it can actually bring up the whole raid. You just want to make sure for the next 8 seconds that your Aura Master is active, that you're going to be casting Holy Shocks, that you're going to be casting Flash of Lights, Light of Dawns. It's very, very important to be stationary. It's very important to not miss out on any cast because... With a proper use of cooldowns and a proper use of spells. Aura of Sacrifice can be the best healing cooldown in the game that's available to any healers out there. It is extremely powerful. It is not uncommon to see Aura of Sacrifice doing 50 to 60 million healing in the 8 seconds. 50 to 60 million healing in the 8 seconds. Depending on the raid, depending on the difficulty, which is insane. The only thing that you need to look out for, heal the targets that are low. So you can't just pleb out and just like, oh my god, there's no one taking damage, why did I use it? Or like, oh, oh look, this guy is at 20%, oh, someone else healed him before me. And all of a sudden your Aura of, of Sacrifice does 2 million healing. It can happen. If you're using Aura of Sacrifice, make sure you're actually very vigilant about what damage is coming out, what target you're about to heal, and things like that. It's not uncommon for paladins to cheese this mechanic, and for specific fights where there's actually, like, let's say, you're not sure who's gonna take damage, you step into ability. Like, it's not recommended, but I've seen this happen. A holy paladin will step into a bad stuff, like this fire on the ground, pop ore of sacrifice, and heal themselves. So that healing on you is going to splash to everyone affected by aura. I've seen this happen and people sometimes can pull this off. I don't recommend this for new players, but if you know what you're doing, you can actually get this to work. Especially if you're not sure who's going to be taking damage. If you're not sure, but this is a bit more of a cheese mechanic. So, in terms of cooldowns, I personally feel that in Antorus, it, there's not that many fights where you would want to macro everything together, where you want to use everything at the same time. I feel you can get away with things like Tears Deliverance, like Holy Avenger. And then wait until the next part, and then like use your Aura of Sacrifice, and then your Wings. Or sometimes just use your Wings by, by, by themselves, especially if you have the Legendary Belt. Like sometimes Aura Mastery with Wings, it's almost not necessary. Because there's not going to be that much damage coming out. There honestly is some... Like, I don't feel that there is parts in Antorus that require that much burst healing of course there are sometimes but i recommend people to have everything separated so if you know the fight when the damage is going to happen that you're like okay so there's going to be a bit of damage i'm just gonna pop you know okay i should have popped tears deliverance first and then holy avenger i'll be fine i'm gonna get the hot from tears deliverance i'm gonna have increased haste from holy avenger which is basically like a mini loss and I'm gonna be, like, you know, I'm gonna back to Holy Shock, Light of Dawning, Light of Dawning, Holy Light, my Holy Light is gonna be fast anyways. Oh, someone's taking a lot of damage, I'm gonna go Flash of Light. Oh, someone's taking a lot of, oh, the tank is taking a lot of damage, I'm gonna go heal the tank even though they have a beacon. Because sometimes you will have to heal a tank even with the beacon. It's not recommended, but let's be honest, in real life scenarios, if a tank is 10% HP, you're not gonna heal a ranged and hope that the hots are gonna heal up the tank or the beacon they're gonna is going to heal the tank. You're gonna holy shock or you're gonna go flash a light on the tank. And you have to keep in mind that with flash a light or holy light, when you beacon when you heal a beacon target, your flash a light and holy light on the beacon of light target will also refund 30% of their mana. So healing a target with beacon is going to be a bit more mana efficient. It's kind of Blizzard's way of saying it. Okay, you're gonna heal the beacon target, you're gonna lose out on some HPS. We know you're doing this for a reason, to save someone, to save the life. So we're gonna, you know, give you an incentive to do it. So it's not a complete waste of HPS. Um, so that's what, like, that's what I mean. In a perfect world scenario, we'll have to heal the tanks at some point. But it's not recommended to spend 
all of your time on healing that beacon target. You want to heal the range. Even though Holy Paladin has the whole perception of being a tank healer, you actually won't spend that much time healing the tanks. You'll be holy shocking the raids, uh, the, the ranged. You'll be using your holy light, your flash of light. You'll be using your light of dawn, trying to hit as many targets in, in front of the cone. You'll be staying in the melee position or you'll be staying in the range camps because of your mastery. And then you'll wonder when to use your cooldowns. That is the essential part of Holy Paladin healing. It can almost feel a little bit of lacklusterish when you only have, you know, your Holy Shock, your Holy Light, your uh, Light of Dawn. Because a majority of your healing will come from burst, will come from using your cooldowns correctly. So you need to learn the damage. Like it's 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 good to know when the damage is going to be incoming and things like you know, maybe I'm gonna use wings on this part. Maybe I'm gonna use wings and tears deliverance on holy avenger and order of sacrifice and valence because there's going to be so much damage. Maybe I'm just going to use wings and valence. Maybe I'm just going to use holy avenger and valence if you have valence. Uh, that's why I mean that's. These are the kind of questions that I get a lot on my channel saying like, when should I use the cooldown? When should I use the healing cooldown? When should I pay this up? Should I get a macro to use it? It's so dependent on the difficulty that you're doing. It's so dependent on the amount of healers that you're running with. It's so dependent on the type of healers that you're running with. My general consensus, my personal opinion on the raids that I run, on the mythic raids that I run with the four other healers, including myself, is that I tend to separate these cooldowns. I tend to separate them. I don't feel that there is a lot of fights on Taurus where all of the cooldowns are needed. I like to separate my Tears Deliverance with my Holy Avenger. Then I like to separate. Then I like to use it to combo my Wings and Aura of Sacrifice if there's going to be a lot of damage. Then maybe pair it up with my Valence as well. There's very few occasions where I actually will use everything. There are occasions like that, but not a lot. But maybe for you, there will be way. Maybe everyone's like 10% HP. But this has been an overview of Holy Paladin healing. On top of the relatively simple healing rotation the Holy Paladins have, and on top of relatively difficult cooldown management, Holy Paladin healing on the move. So, Holy Paladin healing on the move, actually every healer in Legion has some ways to battle the healing on the move. Like There really isn't that many healers that are like, oh, I'm going to be doing zero HPS because I have to move. Like, first of all, you will have your Holy Shock, which is an instant cast. You will have your Light of Dawn, which is an instant cast as well. It does have a cooldown. And then, on top of that, you will have your Light of the Martyr. You will have your Light of the Martyr, which has seen some negative and positive things that are happening in Tomb of Sargeras. Tomb of Sargeras with the legendary cloak stacking and things like that. It's not really really viable right now there are chances of using light of the martyr with the legendary cloak on really heavy movement fights but it's not that much use like first of all <clears throat> light of the martyr is an instant cast ability i cannot cast it on myself because you need to cast it on someone else and the portion of the healing that you do is going to damage you it's actually possible to die from it if you actually heal someone too much if you actually heal someone too much you will die from it you will die from it. Uh, so you need to keep that into account. Now that's one of the reasons why a lot of people will go with Pridus. With the legendary neck. Because you know. The light of the martyr healing or the damaging to yourself. Is going to go into the Pridus shield. Extra healing. More cheesing and things like that. Now a lot of people. And it's not really recommended to use light of the martyr. Besides the movement portions. Because. Light of the Matter does not transfer to the beacon target. So by itself, straight away, it's relatively inefficient when you compare it to something like Holy Light or Flash of Light, which by default is going to heal your current target and your beacon targets. And Light of the Matter is going to just heal the target and also damage you. And also damage you. But in, in movement situations, you have no other options after you use your Holy, uh, Holy Shock, after you use your Light of Dawn, and maybe you precast your Tears Deliverance because that is a hot... That is a hot, that's a 10 second hot. It's the only hot that Holy Paladins have. And then you'll be like, you know, I'm going to light a mind at that guy. I'm going to light a mind at that guy. I'm going to do, I'm kind of dipping low. I'm going to Holy Shock myself. I'm going to light up Dawn. And then I'm going to go back to uh, light up the mind during the movement. And you can do relatively decent HPS through that. You're not completely 
completely blocked from doing any kind of healing on the move. Of course, it's not going to be as efficient as Holy Light, Flash of Light, Light of Dawn, and things like that. But, like I said, you can heal on the move. And Light of the Matter is your one of your major tools. It's not also to be, it's not also to like completely dismiss Light of the Matter. Let's say a tank is about to die from 10% HP, and you know that one second flash of light or one second uh or one second holy light or your holy shock or whatever is not going to save them. Like you need instant healing. Light of the Matter can't save that person. It's an instant cast. If you need that bit of healing instantly, if someone's absolutely about to die and your holy shock is off cool is on cooldown, Light of the Matter can also be a saving tool. So keep that in mind as well. It's not only just for the movement. It can be used to save someone, but holy shock is always the better option if you have it off cooldown. So this has been an overview of Holy Paladin healing in on Taurus raid. Uh, I didn't go to too much uh, talents or too much legendary options because I wanted to showcase what Holy Paladin healing and I feel that the default Holy Paladin rotation is very simple. I feel that the the whole complexity of a Holy Paladin comes from cooldown management. The whole complexity of Holy Paladin comes from knowing when to use your cooldowns, how to use your Aura of Sacrifice. You can opt in to use Devotion Aura. Devotion Aura can be very, very good while Aura Master Reactive, all allies affected gain full damage reduction. So you get 20% damage reduction for everyone within the Aura. Which can be unbelievable. As an example, my personal example, in or in in mythic Agramar, when the two ads are about to hit the boss and there's a big explosion across the board, devotion aura can easily give you 50% 50 million damage reduction. And that damage reduction is not going to show up on your healing uh, meters. So you're going to be looking like a pleb, no healing done at all, especially if you're in a if you, especially if you're on a pug, the pug will be saying, what are you doing? And then you link them to your WoW Analyzer logs. Your WoW Analyzer will tell you that your, uh, that your Devotion Aura, 50 million damage reduction. And you'll be like, here, I did this. So Devotion Aura can actually be a very, very good spell. A very, very good spell. Same with Aura of Mercy. If you're, like Aura of Mercy, I'll tell you this right now. If you're a new Holy Paladin, if you're unsure how to use Aura of Sacrifice, if you don't like that the Devotion Aura does not provide any healing in the healing meters and you're, and your pug leaders are telling you they're about to kick you from the group because you know you don't look good on the meters, which happens all the time. Aura of Mercy can be just something that you click and you don't worry about anything. You don't have to heal effective targets. You don't have to try and optimize your healing rotation. It's just a button that you click and you just, you know, see yourself go up in the meters. Is it the most optimal one? I don't think so. My personal opinion is not. I feel Aura of Sacrifice used perfectly can be one of the best healing cooldowns in the game. I feel Devotion Aura can be one of the best healing cooldowns for progression fights, for guild progression fights, where people won't heckle you for your HPS, about your HPS and things like that. Um, so, this has been my overview. This has finally been my overview. Hopefully, you hopefully this provided some insight into Holy Paladin healing. Hopefully, this was somewhat educational. Let me know if I missed out on something. Let me know how you feel about your Holy Paladin in Legion right now. And thank you for watching this guide. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.